So NFL award predictions. We're gonna start off with MVP. We'll go around Chris, Greg, Miles. I'll finish it off last. Chris, MVP. MVP this year. <laughs> Yo, just hold just on. do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all see this? Y'all see this? You right gotta, there? You gotta move. Oh yeah, I see the JV. <laughs> it's it's a, what is it? What, what is that? A uh, pussy cat? <laughs> butterfly. Yo. Now for real though, Joe Burrow. And, and and not 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 because I'm a Bengals fan, not because I'm obsessed with Joe Burrow, but because it's time. It's time because the conversation is going to start to change if if he doesn't have a big year, right? He he's had a few significant injuries these past few years. This is the first time he's completed a full training camp, and it, the, it's time for the excuses to go out the window. He has all the talent in the world. He's beat Patrick Mahomes. He he can make all the throws. He has, you know, a great receiving core. It's it's time for him to show everybody that he can be an MVP player in this league. Um, and I think this is this is a, a pivotal point in, in his career, just in terms of kind of keeping the narrative as he's he's a top two, top three quarterback in this league. But I think I think if he gets injured again, or I think if he, he doesn't have a big season, that that narrative is going to start to change. So I think he knows it as well. You know, you've heard some of these interviews he's done this off season. Uh, he's definitely playing with a chip on his shoulder. You know, people asked if I remember an interview that he, he recently did, you know, they were asking him like, you know, Joe, like, do you think it's fair that, you know, when people talk about, you know, the top quarterbacks in the league, you know, if your name's left off of it because you haven't been out there much, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I, I get it. I totally understand it. So I think he's coming in knowing that he has a lot to prove. Uh, and he's fully healthy. He's had a great camp. He looks good. The biggest he's ever been. I think that's something key to note, too. He's ready to take some some punishment. Um, if it comes to that, I don't think it's going to be because of the offensive line. But I think, you know, hopefully he can use his legs a little bit more. But, yeah, man, I, I think Joe Burrow's poised to have a big year. No argument for me. I'm not gonna argue that one. Although he may not have Jamar Chase, we'll see. He's gonna have Jamar Chase, bro. <laughs> that could change Miles. things. We, we don't Who's get your it. pick? Who's your pick, Miles? I'm still Aaron Rodgers. I'm still oh my with Aaron God! Rodgers. Talk about delusion. Somebody... Okay, let's see if Joe Burrow is, makes it through. Um, Aaron Rodgers. Anytime somebody doubts him, what happens? Last time they drafted Jordan Love. It was expected that he was going to be out of there in a year or two. He wins back-to-back MVPs. And sure. Yeah, sure. He got hurt last year. Uh, plenty of guys have gotten hurt and done something the next year. Like It's not like it's an impossible thing to ask for. And this team is going to be good. We've got weapons around him. He doesn't – he's not a bad quarterback. Like, that's the thing. People – People are just assuming that it's going to fall off. Like he's still got a, he's got great touch. The arm is still there. He's hungry. I'm sure he's got a little chip on his shoulder because people, you know, people say what they want in the media that uh, a 40 year old quarterback coming off a torn Achilles can't play. So I'm taking the improbable choice, you know, the one that everybody else is too scared to make. It just, it, just, it just noticed though, Chris, how it, it the improbable choice is always on his team, right? I was like, just about to say, isn't it's it? Isn't his it crazy, team though? <laughs> isn't it crazy what fandom can do? <laughs> Bro, you just said you just literally did the same thing. Hey, to be, I, but uh, but listen, I'm not I'm not saying um, you know, absolved from that. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, but I, it is crazy, like being a fan, like <laughs> the length still go to to advocate for your team and your players. Because if Aaron Rodgers wasn't on the was if Aaron Rodgers was on the was on the Packers right now and he got injured, same situation, got injured, came off a blown Achilles first game last year. He's playing for the Packers right now. You're not picking with MVP. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. It's because he's a Jerry Wilson. Gary Wilson's not on the Packers. You don't you don't have the same if, weapons. We got if Aaron Rodgers, bro. The receivers the receivers the Packers have are pretty good, by the way. They're no they're no scrubs. Just being honest, um, that's a whole different conversation. But you know you know I'm right. You know I'm right. <laughs> Okay. That's okay though. I'm gonna you. I'm gonna catch okay though. For me, I, I, I it's it's open. I, I I I hate to give the the generic response. I think yeah, that the Chiefs it. have done it. The, the the Chiefs have given um, Mahomes 
a, a lot to do to work with there now. We're worthy being there and um, loading up and bringing all the, the other assets they have. Rasheed Rice is not in jail. He's still playing football. And he, and towards the end of the season, he popped. He still got Kelsey. I'm going to go home. I, I think that's just a safe choice at this point. I think it's the, you know, it's a realistic option for MVP um, as well. So I'll go with Mahomes, even though I'd love to see something else happen. Maybe a Tyreek Hill win it. It'd be fun to see him go crazy. But I think that Mahomes is still that dude. So um, until I, until you're proven that that's not the case, I think it's a good, a good decision. It's a very safe one, right? That's good money. House money, if you will, unlike Aaron Rodgers. And Joe Burrow is a great choice. I, I, I'm Joe Burrow could win MVP. I, I, I am, I'm high, on, I am high on that. I am. I believe that could happen, um, legitimately. But just to not pick the same people as they did, um, and to give a realistic option there for MVP, I'd say Pat Mahomes is fair. He's gonna be bombing the ball down the field all year this year. My pick is Mahomes. Also, I think yeah. this year he kind of is gonna prove himself to remind people like, hey, yeah, I won it last year, but he didn't have a Mahomes s type of season. I think this year he has one of those seasons. They go back to having some type of 14, 13 win type of season. He looks dominant. I see that happening for him. Offensive rookie of the year. Same order Chris started off. Mm, damn, you make me go back to the draft. Offensive rookie of the year. Give me a second. Give me a second. Ooh. Okay. I'm not I'm not gonna go with the obvious. I'm not. I'm going to go Roma Dunze. I'm going to go Roma Dunze. I think him and Caleb are going to develop a really good connection. Keenan, Keenan Allen is obviously in, uh, you know, DJ are, are great receivers on that team, but I think Rome's going to be an integral piece to that offense. Um, you know, you've seen the chemistry already during the, the bits and pieces from Hard Knocks that we were able to watch. Um, I heard Roma Dunze is having, having a good camp. He looks every bit as much of a pro. Um, you know, the body type is there. The route running is efficient. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Roma Dunze. Is it, was Miles the next one? Yeah, Miles pick next. I'm going to go with Caleb. I think, I mean, they've got all the weapons there. I feel like, sure, that's the obvious choice. But um, he's a really good quarterback coming in. Uh, it's a better situation than what Justin Fields had. He's got two Pro Bowl receivers and a top 10 uh, receiver in Roma Dunze. So I think they're going to throw the ball. They're going to spread it out. He's going to do his thing, and he's going to he's gonna look really good. You're going to see some plays that, like we saw in preseason, where they're going to compare it to Mahomes and all that stuff. So um, though that goes a long way for the voters, seeing some similarities there. So. Let me say Caleb. Can I just say before Greg goes, because I <laughs> I know what plays you're referring to, and I know they were against the Bengals, right? Let me just say, <laughs> that was a third-string defense. And that's not to take anything away from Caleb, because Caleb is a great quarterback. But when he was going against the second-string defense, you know, the first four series, he wasn't doing any of that. That's all I'm going to say. That, that does make a difference when you're talking about players that are going to be on your practice squad. Yeah, fair. I didn't, know it hurt. I didn't know it hurt that much. It didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm, I'm just replaying those, those uh, messages that y- that y'all put in the chat, and I didn't even chime in that day because I was so busy with schoolwork. But he was, he was simmering over there. Just... The Bengals, the Bengals starters did not play that game. That's a, yeah. That's, that's I, all that's fair. I was, I was messing with you when I said that, by the way. So no, I know. But, yeah. I, but I, I just, I just had to say my piece. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, this is a quarterback's award. So the way I see it going one of two ways, either Caleb or Jaden Daniels wins it. Um, if they have relatively good seasons, just, it's just going to go to the quarterback. Uh, the only position player I think that could realistically win this award is Willie Neighbors because he's going to get 100% of the target share with the Giants. He'll get no receiver, rookie receiver will get more targets than him. So if he stays healthy, he's going to get he's going to get so many targets and they're going to get him the ball in so many different ways. And the offensive line is improved. It is. Um and Daniel Jones is going to be taking more chances this year. This, that doesn't mean better football from him. I'm not saying that, but it means that he's going to be taking more chances. He's going to be he's going to be he's going to have an effort type of mentality this year because he's he could be on his way out and most likely will be on his way out of here. So because of that, you have the perfect situation, the perfect melting pot of things that's going to happen for Malik Neighbors to win Offensive Player of the Year, uh, rookie uh, rookie of the year. Excuse me, rookie uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, 
So I, I think that that's the only position player I'd go out, go out on a limb for and say, hey, he can win this award because they're going to give him the ball in a million different ways. He is already the number one wide receiver as well. Um, and so I, I'm excited to watch him in particular in this offense because Day that, Ball is an offensive genius. He's in, he's in draw things up to get this guy going and with an offensive line he can trust because we still haven't seen the, the Giants offense really operate the way Day Ball wants to, wants to operate. With them having an offensive line they can trust him and Daniel Jones having time, I do think they're going to connect a few, more than a few times, especially in that end zone. So I'm excited about it. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say that Neighbors is my like position player pick, but it's a quarterback's award. So if Caleb has a great year, he's going to win it. I'm going to go with a position player. I'm going with Marvin Harrison Jr., Fair. being that he has to, he has Kyler Murray. Yeah. Out of everybody that we mentioned, he has the most proven quarterback that's ready to – he's coming back to prove something also himself. Kyler Murray, and he has that dual threat option. I can I can see it already. Kyle scrambling out of the pocket. Marvin Harrison breaks the route, 50-yard touchdown. Like I, I can see that happening for sure. Going, staying with the offense, not the rookies, but offensive player of the year as a whole, which typically is not a quarterback award. Yeah, I'm going to say Tyreek Hill. Someone consistent that shows up every single year. Um, you know, it seems like we're, we're always talking about him week after week as, you know, in terms of a highlight that he's made and just how he's blown past the, the secondary. Um, yeah, man, he's, he's just – Super consistent to and him have a good connection now gets in the ball. Uh, Tyreek Hill for sure. Yeah. We're doing offensive player to you, right? Yeah, Garrett yeah. Wilson. I would have said Brees Hall, but that's. I mean, I guess that wouldn't make too much sense to some people. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go CD Lamb, just because I know Dak is gonna have to throw the hell out of it this year to prove himself. Even though I feel like he doesn't really have much to prove to Jerry, but apparently he does. But there's nobody else really in Dallas. Like, it's him. It's Jake Ferguson. Uh, They brought Zeke back, but this is not 2020, so don't have to really worry about him. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, he he got the contract. Now, (laughs) it doesn't matter if he's uh, a little banged up. He's going to be out there every snap. He might even challenge for the 2K, be the first receiver to get 2K. Because, I mean, he, he's going to get over 200 targets this year. Easy. This is an AFC and NFC award. It's not one award, right? It's it's the, it's one award? Is that what it is? One award, yeah. Oh, okay. Because McCaffrey cool. won it last year. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, so – all right, if there's one player overall, I'm taking Tyreek. I'll just be honest. See, see, Chris hit that on the head. I'm taking Tyreek Hill. If it ain't Tyreek Hill that wins that award, for me, my sleeper pick to win the award would likely be a guy like uh, Josh Jacobs over in uh, Green Bay, which was not going to be a popular pick. But I, I, they run the ball. The Packers historically have great offensive lines. They're, and even with Jordan Love being a great quarterback now and being an elite player in this league, they're still going to run the tough to pass. It's out of the floor. Everything is, is, set, is set up off of a play action passing. That's their offense. So for me, I really like um, his involvement in the, as a ca- pass catcher in the run game because, I, you know, they, you know Jones had that role before he was before he left. Um, and then also the fact that they're going to give him at least 20 carries a game. And he's still a hell of a running back. And so I, I think in the cold weather over there, they're going to run the ball a lot and have Jordan Love play off of that. And they're going to have some success as an offense. But I like the dimension he brings to that offense. So he's a, he's a sleeper pick for me on that. I'm going with CD also I'm with Miles, a bunch of targets. Um, <laughs> even Jerry said it before he signed him. And his son, too, Steven. Hey, CD's going to see the ball a lot. They paid that man that money. Yeah. That he's going, if he wants to get his money, which he will, to have the best successful season, throw the rock to CD. Ferguson, maybe. Maybe Dalvin Cook. Brandon Cooks may show up, may not show up. So it's I see CD getting it, and I see CD possibly getting that 2K. Switching over to the defensive side, defensive rookie of the year. Quinny on Mitchell. Quinny on Mitchell. Quinny on Mitchell. He's a dog, man. I think I think he's gonna fit in great with that Eagles defense. They got a great defensive line that's gonna get pressure, take the the pressure off of him in, in the secondary because the quarterback's gonna be rushed. And he capitalizes on 
uh, you know, that that type of play from, from quarterbacks. He, he's very twitchy, right, able to jump routes. Um, I think that's going to fit in perfectly to, you know, he's going to get a lot of playing time. Uh, I, I think Quinion Mitchell is going to be the guy. This is tough, by the way. Miles of silence is fair because this wasn't a great defensive rookie class. Yeah. Right so, now, the like, in Vegas, the favorites is Latu Latu and Dallas yeah. Turner. Right. Like the two guys, first of all, the two DNs that went first in the draft, those guys went early. They were the first two DNs to go off the board. Yeah, it's a surprise, surprise they did that. So that's an interesting pick by Chris. It's fair. I mean, I'm sure the Eagles would love that would happen. I'm sure as hell wouldn't. And he also got Cooper DeGene, the only white cornerback in the world. So we'll see how that goes. See. Um, Cooper DeGene's not going to start, though. I, I don't. I don't know. You can't. Don't talk to me about the Eagles. I don't know nothing about them. I don't pay attention to those fools over there. I don't nah, know. Not, I don't think he's gonna start. And he would. Miles would know though. I think, I think he's out of position too. He's. I don't think he's a corner in this league. He's more of a, a safety. Uh, but why is he not a corner, Miles? I just don't think that he's got the, the quick twitch to uh, stick with some of those guys. You're you're probably white. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm gonna go with uh, Jared Verse from the Rams, just as a a sleeper pick. I know they brought him in, him and the other guy uh, from Florida State, to fill the void of uh, what's his name, the guy who retired, Donald. That's right. Um, they they brought him in to to fill that void, and I think. Because the back end isn't that great, he's going to have a lot of chances to try to get to the quarterback. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe at least 10, 10 sacks this year. Okay, for me, I'm going to go with um, with Chop Rod Chop Robinson out of Penn State. I'm going to go. I, I liked him a lot. Um, fast off the off the off the line of scrimmage, really explosive. Uh, really strong can bull rush and get around you. So I think he's gonna have some success early in his rookie year. You know, he'll pay he'll pound to be a good pick. Um as well. So I, I like him um for that for this award. I'm going with Chris. I'm going with the defensive back for the rookie of the year for defense. I'm going with Terry and Arnold over with the, the D- Detroit Lions. That's a team like that's a possibly a Super Bowl contender. He might be a part of that missing piece that helps him get over the hump. So Terry and Arnold, defensive player of the year overall. Right now, of course, every year they rotate this through. Michael Parsons is the favorite, according to Vegas, with Miles Garrett on the back end. And then, of course, who would you think in third place, according to Vegas, is TJ Watt? TJ Watt, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm not going to go out of order, but I know who I'm picking already because I know who's overliable. Chris, Blank. Oh, we started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said GPOY? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, TJ Watt. TJ Watt. He, you talk talk about old reliable, someone that shows up every single year, wreaks havoc on, on the offense, in the backfield, getting interceptions from tip balls on the D-line. TJ Watt is not natural, right? He, he's not He's not human out there. I don't know how he didn't, uh, you know, 19 sacks last year, didn't win DPOI. Um, I think he comes back with, with a vengeance this year. And, again, just just someone who's the heartbeat of, of that team, right? Not even on the offense player side of things, but just from <laughs> – he, he's just he's just unreal. There's nothing to say about him. He, he's unreal. Yeah. I'm going to go with Daniil Hunter from the Texans, I think. That defense is going to be a lot better than they were last year. And they, they had a solid defense. They still got Stingley coming back. And uh, the defensive rookie of the year last year, and Will Anderson. Uh, so I think having him on the other side is going to open up a lot of one-on-ones for Daniil. And he's coming off a career year where he had like 16 and a half sacks for Minnesota in a walk year. So I do think – on a defense like this, he can at least get to 16 and a half, maybe even push towards that 20 range. And, I mean, if that's the case, and they're winning games, which they're probably going to win a lot of games this year, 
that should put him at one of the, the forefront favorites for uh, player of the year defensively. So I'm inspired. I'm inspired by Miles here. So I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to take Dexter Lawrence as defensive player of the year. Um, I think I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. And, and I and Miles, you get you look. I'm not gonna say your, anything. You, know, you get your homegrown picks. You get your homegrown picks. But for me, the reason why I'm going Dexter Lawrence is because no defensive lineman has gotten more interior pressure on the quarterback than Dexter Lawrence in the league. There's like there's an argument for Dexter Lawrence to be considered the great, the best, the best uh, defensive lineman in football, the best interior defensive lineman in football. There's a real argument for that. He's that good um, as well. So. Uh, I, I like I, I, the reason why I'm going to pick him is because I think with Brian Burns being there and Kayvon Thibodeau being there and uh, or sudden, suddenly a very solid rotation of defensive linemen the Giants have, he's, he's going to have some success and give him a little more, a few more one-on-ones. The double teams don't even work. The double teams don't even work. Last year, he wreaked havoc. Um, so I just think this year with Brian Burns being uh, his little terror twin over in uh, in New York, I think they'll be able to get over there and make some, uh, make some magic happen and get after the quarterback and get, he'll get some sacks and have the numbers to be considered for the award. Um in an Aaron Donald S fashion, I, I think that's the kind of season he could have, so long as he stays healthy, and he usually is pretty healthy. So I'll go down uh, Dexter Lawrence. My pick, I'm gonna go something different too. Last year he led the league in pressures with a hundred pressures. I'm going with Max Crosby. They did sign Christian Wilkins also this year, so I think Max is gonna have a pretty big year. Last year he had the most sacks he's had in his career with 14 and a half. Over the last two years he's had 27 sacks. I can see another 12, 13 sack type of season, some forced fumbles in there, something like that. That's the highlight, kind of that defensive line right there with Christian Wilkins probably giving some help so he don't see as many double teams. Max Crosby is my pick. We done did DPOY. We did OPOY. Now we're going to do the last two ones, comeback player of the year and coach of the year. Comeback player of the year, the favorite is A-Rod and Joe Burrow. Yeah. 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 You already know what I'm gonna say for the same reasons I said earlier, man. I'm saying I'm saying Joe Burrow. I think he has a lot to prove. I think he's gonna have an MVP type of year. I think he needs to remind people, you know, why why he was the number one pick in, in 2020. I think I think it's gonna be a, a great year for him. So uh, I'm going I'm going Joe Burrow. I'm gonna go Joe Burrow too. You know, I don't want to be a, a homer, so I'm gonna go Joe Burrow. I, yeah. Um, He's the younger Crazy. pick. He's the, you know, he's got the nice hair and the, the blonde hair. So you see, you see he's such a troll, bro. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna look good for the voters. Hey, okay, <laughs> well, look, you see, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take Aaron Rodgers here, and for a couple of reasons, I'll tell you why. The blown out Achilles at the end in his age. If Aaron Rodgers has a season where the Jets make it to the playoffs, they don't have to win 12, 13, 14 games the way Miles can be about to. If they just get in with 10 wins, 11 wins, whatever it is, he's going to win. He's going to win the award because the age factor, the fact that the, the severity of the injury, the fact that it happened on the first, it's a very memorable injury. It's, it's in our head. It's in our head. We remember it because it happened with him running out with the flag and it was week one. Uh, uh, and, and it, you know, the, the intensity in the building was incredible. And MetLife, I've never seen MetLife like that. So you just you really have to take those things into consideration. He, he, he is likely to win the award if he plays remotely well and they have some success some team success which is just getting into the playoff the playoff berth doesn't matter how they, they don't have to win the division to do it it's got to get in as a wild card and he, he and again doing it in new york doing it in that big media market where where every single week you're going to turn on tv and greenie's gonna be talking about him and clarkson and ryan clarkson gonna be talking about him because that the jets i think that's going to lead to him being comeback player of the year he's gonna be fresh in everybody's mind the voters will have him in mind if they, if they play well. And the Jets have not had that kind of success in a long time. They haven't made the playoffs much in my entire life. Maybe besides Mark Sanchez is a year, they haven't made it. So I do think that if he does it, people are going to be going ballistic here. It's going to be insane. So I do think that it's likely to happen that Aaron Rodgers wins this award. It seems like it's his award to win this year. Um, I will say that. The dark horse for me. That's hey. The dark horse for me. So, so not- you're saying because the Jets are so bad and have been bad for, for the past. That matters. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That it it matters. Like that. that's if fair. They, dude, if, if they go to the playoffs, it'll be the first time they've gone to the playoffs since literally Mark Sanchez took them there. I don't think they've been since then. Since, right? So, does, does, does Kirk have a shot at winning this award? If he if he does the same thing with the Falcons? If Oh, oh you say Kirk Cousins? Yeah. There's a chance. Have- 
Yeah, he's he'd have there. to have a phenomenal year. He'd have to really grossly outplay Aaron Rodgers to do it. And I and, and I just Burrow. but Joe Burrow. Joe, Joe's incredible. Joe, the reason why he's I trolling. think Joe's he's not going to win it, he's trolling, you know, but the reason why I don't think Joe's right. going to win it. Joe don't need to win it because he won an MVP. There you go. Well, the reason <laughs> the reason why Joe don't got to win it, 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 Joe won't win it, in my opinion, is because if he plays great, no one's going to look at him as comeback player of the year because he's a great player and you just expect it. And Aaron Rodgers is a great player too, but he's older and is also in New York and the Jets haven't been good in a very long time. It's going to cause hysteria if they just have a moderate amount of success as a team. You're, you're coming off of your, you're, you're literally coming off of surviving Zach Wilson last year, who went to who went to Denver and looked good in the preseason, by the way, and looked like a different player. But that's a different conversation. It's fine. It's fine. Um, you know, so I'm just saying, I, I think that the logical answer is Aaron Rodgers. A dark horse for me, a dark horse guy for me is Daniel Jones. I do think it could happen. In, in the inverse, if Daniel Jones plays remotely well, team has some success, they win nine, 10 games, he could be comeback player of the year. It could happen, especially with all the uh, tr- the trolling people do about him. He's on the top of your mind. He's in New York. The Giants winning. Again, it's been a while, too. Not as long as the Jets, of course. But it's been a while because we were just in the playoffs. But, you know, still. You know, but it's been a while. So he could, of course, be a guy that gets that consideration. So I think Aaron Rodgers or, or, or Daniel Jones. Yeah, the Jets, last time they won a Super Bowl, it was around the Cold War. So it's <laughs> definitely been a, it's been a while that they've been looking for that. That's the stuff. I'm going to go with just crazy. The- just just to throw something out there different this is extremely a dark horse all your answers are better than this answer but just throwing a, a dark horse out there because i do like how he played he had some flashes before he got injured anthony richardson he can definitely be comeback player of the year if he does well if he actually nine ten games like you said if they can win nine ten games he's playing well he's a dual threat Please, 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 AR-15, if you if you watching this, if this gets to you at any point, slide, bro. Slide, please. I know you as big as Cam Newton and all that, slide. We want to see you for a full season and see what you got because he definitely could be in that conversation as one of the best young quarterbacks with the joy and loves of the world, the CJ Shrouds. We just didn't get to see it because he got injured. Coach of the year. Go, 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 go. You look like that's, I'm going to say that's good foreshadowing from a hot take. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. You bringing him up. Okay. Coach of the year. The fake, funny enough, funny enough, funny enough, funny enough, funny enough, funny enough. This man just got back to the NFL. Jim Harbaugh is the favorite, according to Vegas. Yeah. Who, who won it last year? <laughs> who did win it last year? Oh, uh, the, guy the Texans, right? Oh, yeah. D'Amico? D'Amico Ryan's. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the black ball headed guy. <laughs> yeah. Yo. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Coach of the year. I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Sean McDermott. And I'm going to say Sean McDermott because I feel like a lot of people are counting the bills out. And I feel like he's going to have that team ready to go all season despite losing Gabe Davis, despite losing Stephon Diggs. I think Keon Coleman's going to have a huge year and be, you know, Stephon, uh, Josh Allen's n- number one target, right? Um, and I think the Bills are going to be in a position at the end of the year where people are talking about them differently than they're talking about them now um, and saying, hey, we didn't, we didn't expect this from, from this Buffalo team. And that's a testament to the job that Sean McDermott has done. So, that's, so Sean McDermott, prove me right. <laughs> I like that pick. I like that pick. Uh, I'm going to go a different angle. I'm going with Dave Canales from Carolina. I think this team, I mean, he made Baker look really good last year. Baker revived his career under him as the OC in Tampa. So if he can do that same thing with Bryce Young and they can win a few more games, which they're going to be better this year. They're going to be better than last year. I mean, how many games did they win last year? One, two, they were pretty bad. So anything over that is an improvement. And uh, if Bryce Young comes out and looks like you would expect a number one pick to look like, I mean, I can see it. I can see him getting it just because they've been bad for so long, ever since it's like the curse of Cam Newton, that uh, they've been so bad since he's left. Um, so any 
sign of success, even if it's like six, seven, maybe eight wins. If he wins eight wins, I feel like it should be a lock that he gets it because Carolina's been so bad. Yeah, Coach of the Year typically isn't the best coach, per se, because Bill Belichick would have had it for plenty of years. The Andy Reeds would have had it for plenty of years. So typically doesn't go to the best coach, actually. Greg, who's your pick? And I'll, I'll give mine. I'll go with the Jersey guy, Raheem Morris. Uh, Raheem That's Morris. my pick, man. Get on my yeah. note. Bro. Yeah, man. Raheem Morris over in Atlanta. I just think it the story writes itself. Uh, you got to think about all the pieces he has there now. And, I mean, again, historical context matters with this team. You know, they've been sputtering. They had Desmond. They survived Desmond Ritter somehow. I had to deal with him and his awful play um, last year. And now they go and they upgrade the position considerably with Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins will be solid. Um, and with all the weapons they have there in Pitts, who I don't think is that good. Um, I'm, I'm starting to fear that Kyle Pitts is not that good. But Bijan Robin, Robinson, obviously, and then um, Drake London and all the guys they have there. And then a really good offensive line that allows them to run the ball effectively. I just think that. Um, Atlanta's due for uh, a resurgence this year and certainly at least a wild card spot. So I think that with that being said and the pr- improvement that they're naturally going to make because of the talent on their roster and the upgrade at the quarterback position, Raheem's going to win. The, I think Raheem will get the, jo- get the job done. They got Judon on defense. The defense is solid. They got great safety play. I think uh, who's the safety? Simmons is Simmons over there. I think it was, right? So they uh, Justin Simmons. So I, I, I really like that team um, and o- overall it seems to have a just a a resurgence and to do really, really well. And uh, with that comes getting coach of the year, typically. I ain't going to repeat nothing else. Raheem Morris is my pick. It is what it is. 